I've made countless videos on character timelines in the Harry Potter series, and I get comments pretty often saying that I'm wrong about dates because the books and movies took place primarily in the 2000s. So I thought I'd make a video to break down the actual dates and timelines of the series and explain why the series actually takes place in the 90s, not the 2000s. Before we start, I'm trying to grow my footprint on other social medias besides just YouTube, so it would be awesome if you guys could follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I tweet about your favorite fandoms like Harry Potter, Avatar, Star Wars, Marvel, Hunger Games, and so much more. And you can see behind the scenes movie flame stuff on Instagram, and just some of my personal life like my dog Loki who is the cutest dog in the world, and just some fun posts on both platforms. All of my social media platforms as well as my Patreon are linked below for easy access. If you want, give me a follow. If not, that's totally fine. So now, let's get the video started. So the first book actually took place from 1991 to 1992, and this throws many people off. Because 1. The first book was released in June 1997. So why did Rowling make it take place 6 years before the release date? Well, there's a simple answer, and that is that she came up with the idea for Harry Potter in 1990 while on a train delay, and it took her about a year to actually construct the entire story of the boy who lived and the seven books that would follow his journey. It actually took her six months just to write the first chapter of the first book, and she had 155 different versions of that chapter, but most of them gave away too much. Rowling actually said that had you put all of those 155 first chapters together, you would literally have the entire story for all seven books. And this was a very handy tool for Rowling, because just writing the first chapter, she was able to map out the entire timeline for the series. Anyway, the main reason why the first book takes place in 1991 is because that's when she began writing the actual books. Now that she had everything mapped out, which took the better part of a year, she got down to writing the actual narrative. So she made the date she started writing, 1991, the date where the series begins. And if you think about it, she sort of had to do that, because she can't predict future technology or what would be going on in the future. She doesn't know what new thing will be out when she finally finishes her first book, or even more, when it would be published, which at the time, it wasn't looking too good. And if it was published, it could take many, many years. She had to go off what the world was like in 1991, because that's all she knew. I see people who I guess we could call more casual Harry Potter fans, or fans who have only seen the films and don't know much about the books say that Deathly Hallows took place in 2010 to 2011 because that's when the final two films came out. You'd be surprised how many people say that. And the same goes for people saying that Deathly Hallows took place in 2007 because that's when the final book was released. But if we go off that logic, the logic that the dates are based on the year the books came out, then the first book came out in 1997, and the series spans over 7 years. So if you do 1997 plus 7 years, that would make the final book take place in 2004, not 2007. And the same goes for the films. If the first film took place in 2001, then the final film would take place in 2008, not 2011. Of course, none of this matters, because it takes place from 1991 to 1998. I guess these commenters didn't really think things through, and it surprises me that there are so many of them. Focusing on the film's timeline, there are actually some flaws with the films that many Harry Potter fans point out, as they show more modern day things like modern cars, modernish TVs, and even just more modern clothing styles or hairstyles. Remember when Goblet of Fire came out in 2005 and literally every guy had this long hairstyle? I know I did. You weren't cool unless you had long hair like that. It's stupid, I know, but it shows how modern day influenced the films. And looking at the book's timeline, the technology that they had during the time of the story, it's all pretty outdated. Like when it mentioned a VCR, when DVDs blew up the year Rowling released the first book. Which again makes sense, because how the heck was Rowling supposed to predict DVDs, or that it would be the new platform for home movies that blew up the year she released her first book? She couldn't have. She wrote about the world that she currently lived in, and that world was years behind 1997. And obviously she had to carry through with this for the rest of the series, because you can't just skip a few years in between two books to catch up to modern day. And this is why the Battle of Hogwarts and the series ended in 1998. And then 19 years later clearly had to take place 19 years after 1998, not after 2007. So according to the actual timeline, the epilogue took place in 2019, whereas many fans who just go off of the book's release date think that the epilogue took place in 2026. 1991 is the year that everything is based around, whether it be in the past or the future. 
The dates and birthdays of Voldemort, Dumbledore, Grindelwald, the year that Harry lost his parents, the year that he went to Hogwarts, the years that the first Wizarding War took place in, all are based around that 1991 date. And that is why the series takes place in the 90s, not the 2000s. I just wanted to make this video because I've seen so many people very confused in my comment section, especially when talking about the deaths of characters, most of which lost their lives in the Battle of Hogwarts, which as I said took place in 1998. I hope this cleared some stuff up for those confused, and I hope you learned a little something about the series in general, or even some stuff about JK Rowling and the making of the series. Thank you so much for watching guys. You can follow me on social media to see more of my personal life and see more of this little dude. You can follow me on Twitter and Facebook for Movie Flame updates. And I want to give a huge shout out to all my patrons listed below. If you want to be featured in the next video, plus get a bunch of other rewards, become a patron today. Again, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you press that like button and subscribe and look out for more great videos on the way.